es un, de Urban Planning Management de la, en la Universidad Tecnológica de Isan, en Tailandia. Ah, y ya empezaba muy poquito porque hasta ahora era profesora del Carolina Asian Center, donde sigue siendo investigadora eh, colaboradora de la Universidad de North Carolina. Eh, hizo su tesis, leída en 2016, sobre el Living Heritage Through Literature y es sobre cultural routes, el concepto de rutas culturales. Y eh, eh, también ha, tiene un nuevo proyecto eh, de investigación sobre un archivo del, eh, de cine nacional y un pequeño teatro construido en madera. Entonces, ¿qué políticas de conservación o no conservación hacer, de restauración? y qué hacer con esta, eh, bueno, en, en, en Tailandia tiene toda la tradición de la, de la madera que eh, el, el, el saber hacer de, 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 de knowledge how to do with the wooden eh, is about eh, preserving the knowledge but not the actual materials and all these uh, debates and what, what are the rationale behind uh, a, a living museum like that y un, y un, y un cine eh, que se conservaron no eh, y es lo que ella también analiza. I really want to thank you, Rosima, for, for being here and for sharing and giving us this opportunity of exchanging um, projects, ideas, and, um, and thank you also to all of you for being here. Mm -hmm. Muchísimas gracias a, 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 a todo el mundo. So, um, About a week ago, we have a conference in Coimbra, in Portugal. It's about all about architect. Uh, they meet and they have a conference. The, the conference is about politics and the case. And uh, most of them present about authoritarian. Uh, it's always about the politics. It's all around the world. Asia, Europe, America everywhere they have a politic. And my work is relevant to that because actually it's not the thing that I present here. Uh, I present about uh, gentrification of the borders district in Thailand uh, because of the government who want to gentrify uh, everywhere. Uh, they call the mega project. They call the transformation actually for the negative work in, in urban planning is a gentrification. Uh, but while relevant to, to my uh, the long life research, this is my long life research. I've been doing this about 10 years already. And because of the local legend uh, of is also have a politics inside too. And this uh, study is relevant to uh, toponym is my place name, and I follow uh, the story of the place name. It's a lot in this area for why I call uh, mainland South Asia because of uh, the governed three countries Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. And uh, the way of we study cultural roots that you have here, this is something called the Compostela cultural roots, St. James, that's right, uh, is a, it's a big on the borders. It's mean peace. Because Thai, Lao, and Cambodia, actually we are brotherhood country, but we fight together all the time. And so, um, pity that we cannot speak the language of each other. Especially Thai not understand Laos and Cambodia, but Cambodia and Laos in Vietnam understand Thai very well. They watch Thai TV program, mm -hmm. they can speak Thai. Only one nation in South Asia that never known the other neighborhood is Thai. Because they think that they beyond everyone. They're better than Cambodia, they're better than because of in Thailand we even decide divided into central Thai and the other regions. My story is mean that minority uh, storytelling that the government not like it. And the government told uh, the parents all the time, don't tell this story to your children. 
So when I was young, my grandma told my, uh, this story before. Uh, it's a bedtime story. Every night, uh, because of it's kind of 500 years old story, so we still telling and telling. And right now, the children not know this story anymore. And the relationship between the parents, the grandparents, and the kids is gone too. Because of every time that grand, uh, grandparents try to tell the story, the kids say that, oh, it's fake. It's not true. Uh, because I learned from the school, and the fire department uh, officer came here and said that it's untrue. Uh, so grandparents stop telling the thing, and they not have anything to tell the kids because um, for reading a book that the parents tell the story by reading a book and the relationship is, is weird in, in, that, uh, in the every community that uh, strong belief in this local legend. And this local legend um, is a kind of um, it is a hidden thing inside, especially archaeological site, artifacts. So everywhere that uh, have a place name from this story, it looks like a blueprint that uh, we can guess that, we can predict that, have something in this village, or this town, or this old town. And it's true, I will show you. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me today. And thank you, Institute of Heritage Science, uh, Spanish National Research Council, especially Christina, who arranged this one. Even I <laughs> informed her that, oh, I'm in Porto. Uh, I think four hours a day. Uh, I want to share this because I want to come to San uh, for the composer. Uh, Laura Jane Smith uh, wrote that heritage is about sense of taste, not simply in constructing a sense of abstract identity, but also in helping us position ourselves as a nation, community, or individual, and our place in our cultural, social, and physical world. So this paper focused on exploring alternative sense of place and the relationship between place and movement in early Siam and. Uh, present day Thailand through written literature and oral sources. The budget European roots is a part of an international route of local legends stretching from Thailand to Angkor, Cambodia to Wat Phu to Pasak Laos. The route consists of three world heritage sites and at least 29 other sites related to the use of route, such as sanctuaries, lyrics, monuments temples, historic towns, rivers, and a mountain escarpment. Place name in local legend act as blueprints of old towns and villages. The local people use these legends and the embedded place name to communicate the past to the present. My research has revealed many villages which were previously unknown to the wider audience. Not only does this talk give a brief description of a management plan, but it also copes with the question of the destruction of the tangible and intangible cultural heritage embodied in these roots. Today we will understand the story of two protagonists who travel along the lower northeast of Thailand to Angkor and Jampa Sak Laos, PDR. And who are they? What is the budget or a story? Why does everywhere they have the place names that follow their story? How the story been kept from the past to the present? <coughs> For this cultural road, sorry, my American accent, the International Council and Monuments and Sites, known as ICOMOS, define cultural road route as a New ethics of conservation. Of sorry. A common heritage that goes beyond national borders to demolish borders <coughs> or boundaries is one of the core concepts of cultural roles. The first cultural role was in San Diego de Compostela, Philippine Route in Spain, launched by Cultural Roads Program of the Council of Europe in 1980s and adapted by the UNESCO World Heritage in 1990. Cultural roads as a magnificent strategy 
to protect, preserve, and conserve. A multidisciplinary approach is used to explain and analyze this topic. Cultural Ross introduced a new, more experiential concept of heritage that meets the aspiration of the postmodern tourist. The next two slides are examples of literary cultural routes and the success of the excavation in the archaeological site from information contained in legends. The European Grand Tour combined one of the most relationships <coughs> between literature and tourism. Since Homer wrote the Iliad in 1194 BC, about 3,000 years ago, Europe, North America, and the whole world are culturally linked to his literary work. He has a city of Troy, which archaeologists who follow the path of Homer from Heinrich Schliemann in 1868. Actually, he was the one of the famously destroyed some layers of his excavation. To the geologist John C. Kraft from the University of Delaware and the classicist John V. Lewis from Trinity College, Dublin, is presented the result of investigations. They compared the present geology and size with the landscape and coastal features described in the Iliad and other classical sources. The Spanish route uh, is more than a thousand kilometers long in the territory of Castilla La Mancha, a uh, legend famous of Vilnius, Aragon, and Barcelona. The tangible, intangible, and landscape heritage were recorded by Cervantes in 17th century. Present day readers can use their imagination to compare with they see in the present with the past. This is an official recognized Don Quixote route that goes through 148 towns. It is 2,000 kilometers of routes cover a vast stretch of historical and livestock trails indicated with clear size. The route is divided into 10 itineraries with 56 days that united the most important site highlight in Cervantes' masterpiece. The area of the study in is mainland South Asia. It is consists of three countries, Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. My area of study uh, modeled it along the Phnom Nam Red Escarpment. The important aspects of the landscape that appear in the budget of the region and the place name of village, mountains, <coughs> river, creek, and part of the land. The landscape of its southern Isan is domi dominated by an escarpment connecting to mountains. The Phnom Dang Red Blanche defined the southern border of Northeast Thailand, 750 kilometers long the Dong Phayayin Range, at the western and eastward to Uwon Rajatani and to Phukau Jampa Saklao. Phnom Dang Red in the Khmer language means wooden beam, shoulder or shoulder pole for carrying basket at each end. The west and end of the beam is the west end of the beam is Dong uh, uh, Yeah, is the west side. And the border of the central north is Thailand, while the east end of the beam. Uh oh. Okay. The east end of the beam is where the resides of the Lao in what pool size that is based. Both the western and eastern ends are world heritage sites. The Moon River and several creek, this is Moon River, uh, and several creek flow northward of the gentle slope, the Dumbrick has come into water southern section of the sun. Archaeological evidence show that inhabitants lived in this area as long as 3,000 years ago. The story of Paji Aropim has been recorded in various media oral literature, manuscript, published manuscript, and morals. However, the story is primarily divided into two media. Uh, local legends know in Laos and local noise Thailand, which focus on place name, and the Panasat Jataka in Central Thai, and local northeast Thai, which some version has no place name. 
it's not Jataka, it's, it's a place to breathe. No, it's the, it's the Jataka for the Buddhist, it's the kind of manuscript. Pachita Kuman Jataka. I would like to explain a bit more about this one. Uh, what is Jataka and Banasa Jataka? Jataka narrated to the, the Buddhist. The Buddha uh, career as a Bodhisattva, one who is to become Buddha. Um, in Buddhism, uh, we believe that before the Buddha become Buddha, he has to be in Bodhisattva about 500 life long. Telling about his past life, the Panasat Jataka or Panyasa Chado, containing the non canonical Jataka, was written in the South Asia. The Panasat Jataka was influenced by Buddhism and, lo and local legends. The Buddha or Bodhisattva in this non canonical Jataka of the last 50 lives of the Buddha is often depicted as a prince. It contains many stories about romance, such as in Pachita Kuman Jataka or the Pachit Arapim story, which is about the suffering of someone missing their beloved. My project is uh, focused on the place name, but I also used the other sources to provide more information to understand the story. Uh, I think all of you want to know the story, uh, so here we go. Pajit was a prince who lived in Angkor Thom, Cambodia. A fortune teller told him to go to find his wife, who was a baby in the womb of a pregnant woman. Pajit was told this woman had an umbrella shadow over her while she found. Pajit found this woman and then he helped her give birth and helped to raise Arapim. When Arapim was 16 years old, Pachit asked Arapim to marry her. Pachit then had to return to his home to collect the bride price while returning from collecting the bride price at his palace to Arapim's house. Pachit learned that Arapim had been kidnapped by another king of Himai. Pachit, uh, righteously angry, destroyed his gifts and threw the pieces into various places. These places took on the name of the things that land there, but she snuck into the Pimai palace and helped Arapim escape from the king by killing him. When Arapim first saw Baji, she called out Pima, using the local Pimai accent, meaning brother comes. This is no Pimai city got its name. Baji and Arapim escaped. However, using a boat to help the couple cross the river, a novice absconded with Arapim. She killed the novice. Then the novice became fruit flies, and this is the origin of fruit flies in Thailand. Arapim undertook uh, a long journey to find Bajit, who had himself left the river to find Arapim. To protect herself, Arapim transformed herself into a man by putting her womanly attributes on tree and ordaining as a Buddhist monk. She became an abbot and had that story painted on the wall of the temple. One day, Bajit came to the temple, saw the mural, and realized that this is their story. He cried and fainted, and Arapim found him. This is the reason why so many ordination halls in Thailand were painted with Arapim's story to imitate the religion. Arapim then made a wish that the trees give her back her womanly attributes. The couple traveled to Bajit's palace in Angkor together, but later returned to Pima and cremated the king that Bajit had killed. The crematorium became a stupa or jedi, which stands today in front of the historical park. The origin of place name can tell us about local people's tangible and intangible heritage and their ethnic cities. Inquiry into the authenticity of places and things mentioned in literature allow us to know and understand our own homeland and those of others. This is the name of the village. It comes from the local legend. In this paper, I am presenting the relationship between heritage, 
cultural roots and literary tourism discovered through many approaches. Cultural mapping is the tool that I use to discover these cultural roots. For the oral component of my research, I talk with three groups of informants, young people, elderly people, and local intellectuals. For the manuscript portion of my research, I include Tam Nan Meung Phi Mai from Thonburi period is uh, 1773. Um, this one, about almost 300 years. I present my translation from Thai words found in the manuscript into English free words. I focus on read every part in the manuscript and discover that there were 14 place names. Fortunately, everywhere of these places is an actual place that continues from the past to the present. This is my translation. I translate from Thai into English, actually the old Thai, 300 years old Thai. The poet of the manuscript mentioned Angkor Thom which he called Mahanakon Thom. He described the architecture style of Angkor Thom, but used many Thai architectural terms. However, he did use some words that hinted to Angkor Thom as successful versus Pramin. The Pima city is called Pima because Bajit came to rescue all the Pim here. In-depth interviews with local people in Laos, in Siem Reap, and in the southern Isan provinces were collected. From 2011 to 2014, local people told the story and place names, duplicating the information contained into the manuscript. The place names from explorer memoirs, the travel of Bajit Arapim, did not differ dramatically from those done by the many famous foreign travelers who came ac across this landscape. From the records, their roots in Cambodia, Siam, and Laos. Only Muo, Francis Garnier, Etienne Monnier, and Eric Sidon Faden used both water and land routes. The, tra the travel by walking, by car, and by horseback, the traveler had different objectives of traveling. All of these surveyors traveled to or past budget or sites and noted down interesting details. The budget or routes uh, consist of 29 sites. The routes are more than 2,500 uh, 2, km long. However, the majority of places are in the Konrashima and Buriram area. Two important places are located in Cambodia and Laos. And got home and jump up, respectively. The long route can be divided into five tracks. Follow the theme of the story Quest for Oropim, Bright Prize, Escape, Pursuing Budget, and On the Way Home. I have invented the concept of the literally palimpsest landscape approach adopted from William Morris Davis. Uh, he explained the importance of the connection between geology, <coughs> geography, landscape, and the add literature or oral written and heritage. One of the main reasons local people tell their story is to identify their places. This approach can be used to predict or develop understandings of the past of local religion. Sites or places located in the landscape represent histories in multiple periods of time, which are not separate from each other, but interrelated and overlaid with other sizes or places on the landscape. Next is an example of use literally palimpsest landscape to understand land use uh, in an historical area. This is Tham Bet Thong in Thai or Golden Dark Cave. 
the, the place that Bajit threw his blind prize away after hearing news from villagers that Horapim was kidnapped by King. One of these bright prize items he threw it was a golden duck, which he threw in a place close to a creek. The villagers named this cave next to the creek that Golden Duck Cave. This is one of the most important historical sites in South Asia, hidden in a remote area of northeast Thailand along the creek at the Piedmont of the Dangrek Dung Escarpment. The inscription in the cave records uh, Saint or Krishna devotion to the Hindu god or Shiva and his consecration of several Sivalingas, uh, even though the cave today is closed to by flooding, uh, cause of a dam built by the Thai government, the local people still remember this place both in legend and archaeology. Uh, coincidentally, in Singapore, the Golden Duck, uh, when I'm in Singapore, is the popular. In Singapore, the Golden Duck is like a brand name of a snack. In that time, it's very funny. Um, this is Mr. Sanga. Uh, he's the guy who told me about the story about Tham Pet Tong. He said to me, Bajit rolled his boat into this area. He believed like that. He, uh, he, he believed in the truth that is the old time that he had a real Bajit uh, that uh, rolled his boat into this area. His bright prize, the golden duck, turtle, and fish were left there. Uh, he said, I've seen the boat and many of the bike pipe pieces made of stone. Actually, he was a former comrade in the communist time, in that time, during the Cold War. He lived in the village about 200 kilometers away from uh, the, this cave. He said his away came to play in this area when he was young. He knows this area very well. Then he took me to visit the other side. It is the monument of the communist monument of which he is being a custodian. So this is another layer of the history uh, that, from, uh, that I study. The monument here on the monument of uh, southern northeast Thailand added another layer of history. It is located inside the wat, uh, or the temple are uh, many memorials representing memories of this attempt revolution. This uh, include a stupa for the ashes of their memory. You know why it's very important? Because actually in Thailand, we put the ashes of Buddha in the pagoda. But they put the, the comrade ashes in this pagoda. But this is a hidden place the government tried to neglect because if the government interest the government will destroy this stupa. And in this, uh, the relevant to the nature and legend in this story, all of him remember that she throw uh, her womanly attribute. Uh, all of him know that the forest was dangerous for the woman. She wanted to change herself to be a man. So she made a wish using two kinds of tree. This is a new and some wrong tree. These two kind of tree uh, have part that they look like a breast and what is this? Mm -hmm. oh, a vagina that I have this for you. <laughs> to look at this too. Vagina trees. <laughs> Actually, uh, in, in Khmer and Lao and, and the border of that, um, <laughs> we believe that this is a kind of sacred fruit tree. If you have a naughty boy in your house, you should hang this for him, especially your husband maybe. <laughs> you can tame him like a, he's better, be happier. But uh, they use it for the naughty boys. It's like uh, three years old, six years old, something like that. But in America, we use this for Trump. For Trump? <laughs> Please. I sent him maybe thousand. 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 
Sanno bacena. Sono un po' di giro. E io ricordo. 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 E io Uh, the influence of the local legend in combination with people found this listening to Tama or Jataka story has um, contributed to the popularity of the Bajit or Pim story among the local people. The story influence of art and culture can be seen from manuscripts and wall paintings in northeastern temples such as uh, the ordination hall uh, and painting in uh, some windows, panels at uh, the temple. And this is transformation of legend into belief out of him when she became a goddess. When I'm in this site, uh, I didn't know that this thing will happen. Uh, the head of the village told me, you should come back tomorrow. We will have a ceremony uh, to make worry to all of him. I said, huh? All of him, she's in the local legend? Yeah, she's our goddess. And the next day, actually, is the religion day in Thailand. They chant the temple instead of the, they have a ceremony in the temple. They chant to the land because they have uh, some uh, lyrics that they understand that uh, this is the place, that this is the chair of our Pim when she have a rest in the village. And they invite uh, the woman from, from many places in Bangkok and they have a dance and they become sacred places. And when they walk there, one um, woman that she, uh, she act herself like a monk and she, she pointed me that this one will help our village. <laughs> what do I have? And uh, what you want us to do? I said, could you please make a worship uh, like uh, the hot things out of her chair because she's hot. <laughs> I don't know how to explain in the, in the way of you know, conservation. So I mix together like a local legend, uh, create a new story that uh, she told me that she feel hot when you put uh, the candles close to her chair because it destroy the artifacts, the lyrics. That's why right, because the community didn't know how to uh, preserve about the archaeological site. So I used the same way as they used. So I used the the legend told them that the technique of folklore that oh she not like that she's too hot so like now on the left side of the the picture it changed when I back they create uh, another uh, sala or uh, like a little room to make a watch it for the second places Uh, after I understood and mapped all the place names, I turned to find out how to interpret and present the route to the people uh, for the education and tourism. I designed a cultural map of the route uh, in cooperation with the stakeholders in each community. The local people received uh, some information and cooperation from the government department. Manuscript memories and observations reveal the hidden size. When they were associated, it was like weaving a net or uh, connected, connecting all the pieces like a jigsaw puzzle or put it together. For the brochures, evaluation, the local people who gave information to this project critique and comment on. Um, then I took a comment to develop the map. Uh, filters. So after I decide brochure and map, I took it back to, to them and let them critique, comment uh, what 
what should I uh, amend it or correct it. And then I'm bad. But they're glad that their story uh, is put in a, on a map. It looks like important that we believe that, uh, we believe them, we think we pay respect to, to their belief or their heritage. This colorful map is used as an edutainment tool that is that I present there uh, for the families who are look like cartoon. I uh, visualize a father, mother, and children driving along the roads together. The reverse side of the map is full of information about the story, cultural roots, providing information which children can read or parents can explain why they are on the journey. Moreover, this map and brochure should be a good tool for both teachers and students for their excursion to science along the roads, mixing knowledge between scientific information, history, and local knowledge. Uh, there are many sizes of signage at sites to welcome people and give direction uh, and instruction. These the signations are aimed for people to read and understand places, even if they sit in their car or get out and stand, because everyone lazy out of the a car when it's hot. However, I intend to assist visitor who drive and who don't want to get out of the car. This family can use the brochure, read the side together, and then drive on the next side. The level of signage should allow people to select their own choice, whether they want to drive through or get out to read the sign of the case. They feel an interest in more information slides. And I also design management plan for these routes for immediate uses. The ensure, to ensure the planned success to its established stakeholders and communities to respond to the rules. Positioning the cultural rules, developing facilities, transporta transportation, and local communities, interpretation, promotion plans to the rules. Conserve and protect, um, conserve and protect the living culture, the living history, and local identities of People living in the affected zone, legal protection zoning means actual protection of the sites. Here are the examples of what we should protect along the route. The river is unflowable because um, of this is the sand. Uh, in the river have a lot of sand and they have a factory and they pour the sand to sell. So it close the river. If we not have a zoning, uh, this thing will happen. And this project study voices from local people, local communities, to preserve and conserve their homeland. Members of these communities wish to use their heritage for identity, preservation, as well as to commemorate the complex relationship between Thai, Khmer, and Laos, to show that heritage is sharing, and cultural roots are the path to peace. Uh, when they back to the site, they intend to use it as a performance to show the people and uh, this is the community become the actor and actress. I think it's fun. And they rent uh, some uh, performance clothes from somewhere else and they act like a budget in our opinion and the role of the protagonist in this one. And this research wouldn't occur without all the people who generate their own story from generation to generation. This is that touch from the village nearby Angkor Thom, Siem Reap, Cambodia. This is a former deputy sub-district administrator uh, at Buriram, Thailand. This is the grandma from Nong Ki. This is a former head of sub-district. This is the public health volunteer uh, and the village. This is the head of the village that I met him before have a worship. And the last one was a principal at the elementary school near Wat Po Jung Pa Sak Laos. One of them already passed away.
One of them is very sick. Some of them are not in the same rank because of the politics. But they have something in common. Sorry. <laughs> they, have sto they are storytellers who preserve their tangible heritage through their in intangible heritage. They continue to take pride to, their own pe to, to tell all people about the story of their own land. Even if the state resists acceptance of their stories, there are small people who are still walking along these old roads from one village to another village, pulling their grandchildren's hands to walk together with peaceful pride in the middle of the boisterous immigrated scholar. Thank you very much for your attention.